I'm Blue Allen. I'd like to talk to you today about eliminating the brace or the braciness in your horse. I see a lot of times people that uh, have, th th there's a huge brace in their horse. And what I mean by brace is just stiff, um, pushy, leany. Um, the horse just never looks comfortable. So let's talk a little bit about uh, braciness and uh, one, how I think it gets there um, and two, how we can relieve it and get rid of it, hopefully. Uh, a good friend of mine always reminds me and always tells me every time I ride with him, Jack McCumber always says, you can't train a horse by holding him. And I think there's so much truth in that. And over the years, I've learned more and more about you can't train a horse by holding them. In other words, uh, they have to be able to turn loose and find a reward um, and do the job on their own by themselves. Uh, they also, holding one creates that, that brace. It gives them something to lean on. In other words, they lean on our hands. I mean, a lot of times as riders, we use these reins as a third stirrup rather than uh, learning to set down on our pockets and, and ride with the horse. And we're all guilty of it. You know, there's, there's times I catch myself where I say, oh, you're holding him, you know, turn him loose. Let him make a mistake, it's okay. But let's talk about how to get rid of braciness. Uh, a lot of times we all, we all know that speed kills whether you're driving a car or riding a horse. Speed is, when you add the element of speed is when the wheels fall off. Um, especially, you know, a lot of times early on, you know, we expose them maybe a little more than we should, uh, which is okay. I feel like you need to challenge your horse. You need to let them get comfortable with going fast and with speed, but they also need to always be checking back in with you. I know for me personally, I do a lot where I will make them go fast, and, but every time I start to take a hold of them, if I get a brace or a bracy response, I'm gonna go right back to moving things around, isolating body parts and trying to make them look for the answer. So anytime I feel like if I pick up, no matter how fast we're going, if I wanna take his head and his neck around or I wanna pull on him, I want him to maintain this same look. Um, so if I, if I take a hold of him, and I go to pull him around and things start to get bracy, the first place that it's going to tell on me is through his head and his neck. His head and his neck will raise up in the air and I've lost the ability through his back for him to stay round and stay soft. So if I pull him around, I'm going to stay in here and keep isolating these body parts, this rib cage, um, pushing him around with my feet, and then I'm gonna say, okay, now that you're soft, I'll turn you loose and we'll go try again. There's nothing wrong with letting him make the mistake. You have to let them make a mistake. And this goes back to holding them. We're afraid that they're going to make a mistake. So we try and hold them and prevent them from making a mistake. And in all reality, what we end up doing is getting in their way more and more rather than then telling them it's okay if you make a mistake. They're just like us. If you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. You learn by your mistakes and go on. Um, but any, anytime you feel like you pick up and you don't get a soft response, go back and move your horse around. Move him off of your feet. Move him around. And the whole time, try and make his, his chin, his head and his neck stay soft in your hands. It shouldn't feel like you've got to be Arnold Schwarzenegger to ride a horse. Um, you should see how little it takes to get something accomplished, not how much it takes. Hopefully this helps relieve some of your braciness in your horses and good luck.